we talked about adding immuno to chemo as a strategy. One of the other strategies is adding immuno agents together. And obviously, we've been interested in the PD, PD-1, PD-L-1 axis with CTLA-4. And so we have a couple of trials. Uh, I believe Mystic has been done for quite some time uh, in terms of its accrual. Um, and I think 227 um, is close to being done, if not done already. But these are exploring these combos. What you, you, right, right. So thoughts? we have the early stage data on the combination of Dervalumab, which is a PDL1 inhibitor, with Tremolumab, which is a CTLA4 monoclonal antibody. And the hope is that these combinations of immunotherapy may capture more of those patients who are not high PDL1 expressors. And there is data that seems to show that there is an improved response rate. Um, when these agents are used in combination. Now, the stage 1, uh, the um, 1B data from the Dervalumab and Tremolumab study showed a response rate of 23% in these patients, and it didn't seem to matter what their level of pdl one expression was. And the MYSTIC study is a randomized combination of either a randomized study of either that combination or the Dervalumab by itself or standard chemotherapy. Um, and then you have the nivolumab and nipilumumab combinations where they actually did seem to depend upon the PDL1 level. The response rates were better in those patients that did, ex did not express PDL1 than we tend to see with the checkpoint inhibitors by themselves. But still, the people who had a higher level were an, were an enhanced population who had a better response rate. The problem with the combinations is that they definitely have increased toxicity. toxicity the CTLA4 yeah. antibodies are much more difficult relative to the, to the PD-1 inhibitors. The side effects we see with these agents are autoimmune events. Um, the one I most commonly see is, is the hypothyroidism developing as people stay on these agents. Um, but when I treated a patient on a study of the combination, I, I ended up with a case of aplastic anemia. We've had perforations from colitis with the combinations. In the um, uh, Duralumab, Tremolumab study, 30% had to discontinue treatment due to treatment-related toxicity. So that's a pretty high rate of toxicities yeah. we're seeing with these combinations. So the question is, is the bang worth the buck at right. the end of the day? We don't know yet. Yeah, and, and I personally don't think we're seeing enough of an augmentation of response. As you mentioned, it was in the order of 20 plus percent with a combination, which is what you see with single agent mm -hmm. second line yeah. uh, therapy. Um, and in fact, uh, it may be telling that the um, application for the nivolumab, ipilimumab approval was recently withdrawn. So right. that might give us an early hint of what the uh, final results will look yeah. like. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, it, it was a limited set of patients that was reported, but um, uh, the response rate was as high as 45% in that small group of patients. So I think we need to give the data some time to mature. I'm still... Well, um, you know, I'm actually, to, to Alex's point, I've, I've, I was impressed that, you know, Mystic did have an independent DSMB. And it went to full accrual. So even though the toxicity may be worse, it d didn't stop the trial, like we've seen with a number of new agents in lung cancer where trials were stopped because of toxicity. Well, that's right. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm reassured by that, but I do share your concern that, um, you know, in the average lung cancer patient, that the, the toxicity um, scale may be tipped with immunocombos, whereas I don't have that same feeling with chemo in, in this particular setting. Um, Getting back to October 9th, Alex, um, on, <laughs> on that lovely day in Copenhagen, we also saw the presentation of the Oak trial, which brought us yet another option in the second line setting. Could you walk us through the atezolizumab Oak data? Just Sure, and just for everyone, atezolizumab as opposed to nivolumab and pembrolizumab is a PDL1 inhibitor, a monoclonal antibody against PDL1. So going back to that toxicity element, the thought was, can we maybe see a better toxicity profile if we use one of these drugs? Uh, Endervalumab that you mentioned is also a PDL1 drug. Um, so the efficacy that we saw, talking about that first, the response rate was 15%. Um, hazard ratio was 0.73, and the overall survival was 14 month, months. It was similar in design to the previous checkmate and keynote trials where the, the control arm was docetaxel. Um, but I don't think that I saw a dramatic difference in toxicity uh, with the tezolizumab and the other agents that were previously tested. Um, although one thing that struck me was that if you look at the range of patients who had various sort of shades of staining, mm -hmm. going from, you know, as Jared mentioned, for this particular drug, you look not just at the tumor cells, but also the infiltrating uh, component. And if 
you look from zero up to three plus, there was some benefit in all subsets, granted that you know, it was skewed towards more benefit in the higher staining patients. Um, but I think my take home from this is if you have someone who needs an immune checkpoint inhibitor in the second setting, giving a tezolizumab is reasonable, especially considering the schedule that's given every three weeks and not two weeks for nivolumab. Um, in the absence of um, having enough tissue for PDL1 staining. Yeah, and, and, and we saw data, you mentioned Devolumab, Tracy mentioned it, the, the Atlantic study. Your, your thoughts on that, the activity of that agent? Well, so I, you know, I wouldn't, I think the activity there was sufficient to justify the ongoing uh, studies that we've discussed. We had different cohorts uh, in Atlantic. It started with all comers, and then there was uh, a cutoff at 25%, later a cutoff uh, at 90%. Um, as far as efficacy, what I took away from that uh, mostly was that there were real durable responders, that that, um, that phenomenon was there. And it was tolerable, uh, justifying the ongoing studies. Uh, pe people have a, um, let's assume that the patient is not strongly pdl one positive, gets first line, we'll talk about that in a moment, and arrives at second line. You have three choices. What's your go-to second line choice, immunotherapy? He used to be nivolumab up until the recent approval of atezolizumab, uh, but um, r because of the scheduling issues, I think atezolizumab is going to become increasingly adopted in my practice at least. Jared? Uh, so I have the greatest comfort with pembrolizumab, uh, just having experience back to early trials. So if they're pd one positive, I use that. And if they're not due to the uh, schedule, I use a tezolizumab. Yeah, so we, we tried to put together a pathway on this very um, idea. And what I was hoping to do, I was hoping we could choose the agent that costs the least for, <laughs> yeah, for what that we would. They, they, they all come out. They all come out. Similarly, extremely yeah. expensive. So that one was a wash. Um, but we'll use the Q3 week approaches and our pathway um, because we're trying to keep things as similar as we can. Pembrolizumab, if there's any PDL1 positivity, and if it's zero, then atezolizumab. And Alex at Sloan, what's same as Jared. Yeah. If positive, pembrolizumab. If negative, or you can't do PDL1, atezo. Atezo for okay. me for, for scheduling. Correct. Uh, and now that yeah. we're testing for first line. Uh, for first line, there shouldn't be unknown. Right. In second line, mm -hmm. and one final point on that unknown. Um, I think it's even worse to have, in a way, to have a PDL1 unknown than, than molecular, not because of, of, of extent of benefit, but because this is just an IHC. This yeah. takes a slide. There's no reason it should take more than two days to come back. Right. It, Are you going back and testing the people who have already on first line or through first line? You... Uh, is there any role for testing it beyond first line? No. Yeah, you, I don't think there right? is. No, we will. Okay, so I would need to qualify that. Uh, <laughs> no, We're all if, academics, of course we have to. If write. we're talking about standard of care therapy, yes, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's what uh, I'm talking about. If we're talking about clinical trials, right. I think there is yeah. a great deal of yeah. questioning what do you do after progression on immunotherapy? Right. Um, that's my next should question. Should you be testing for PDL1 in yeah. that setting? What other biomarkers should we be looking for? Yeah. And I think that's going to be um, keeping us busy for the next few years. Yes. You know, it's interesting. My nurse went back. We have a patient with a brain meds who was progressing all over who we put on second line of volumab without testing. He was having a fabulous response. So now that we're testing everybody, my nurse went back and tested her, and she was zero. Yeah. She's having a yeah. fabulous response. Yeah. Yeah.